Welcome to the webinar CIH exam equations visually explained and with examples. In today's presentation, we will go over the radiation equations. My name is Dr. Daniel Farkas, and I am a certified industrial hygienist, certified safety professional, and certified hazardous material manager. I would like to thank Kent A. Candy, MS, CIH, CSP, ARM, CPCU for the peer review of this webinar. If you have follow-up questions, please contact me at daniel at danielfarkas.com. First, let's remember some common facts about waves. Electromagnetic waves with shorter wavelength have more energy than waves with longer wavelength. This is described by the wave particle duality of electromagnetic radiation. As a result, shorter wavelengths, like the red ball in the animation, have higher frequencies and correspond to higher energy photons. Longer wavelengths, like the blue ball in the animation, have lower frequencies and correspond to lower energy photons. As you can see, the red ball is more energetic while the blue ball is just cruising by. This principle is applicable to all electromagnetic waves, including visible light, radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, ultraviolet radiation, X-rays, and gamma rays. The radiation chapter has 28 equations. Let's start with the first equation. This first equation is known as the inverse square law, which states that the radiation intensity decreases as a function of the second power with distance. This law can be found in various areas of physics. As you can see in the animation, if you double the distance from the source, the radiation intensity is reduced to one-fourth of its original value. If you triple the distance, the intensity becomes one-ninth of the original value, and so on. For example, a radiation dose rate is 100 millirem per hour at 20 feet from the source. What is the radiation intensity at 40 feet or 60 feet? The intensity at 40 feet equals 100 times open parentheses 20 divided by 40 close parentheses square the entire parentheses which equals 25 millirems per hour, which is actually one-fourth of the original value. For 60 feet, we have 100 times, open parentheses, 20 divided by 60, close parentheses, raised to the power 2, which results in approximately 11.11 .11 millirems per hour. Now let's go to the second equation. This equation is about Rankin equivalent man dose or REM, which is the equivalent of radiation absorbed dose times the quality factor. REM is a unit used to measure the biological effects of ionizing radiation on human tissue. REM quantifies the potential harm of radiation by taking into account the amount of radiation absorbed by the body and the type of radiation. The quality factor is very important because different type of radiations have different biological effects, even if they deliver the same amount of energy. 
For example, alpha particles are more damaging to biological tissue, especially if they are inhaled or ingested, than beta or gamma rays. That's why they have a higher quality factor. The REM is now being replaced by the sievert in the international system of units, where one sievert is equal to 100 REMs. For example, the quality factor of alpha particles is 20. What is the REM dose for 100 red? In this case, REM equals 100 red times the quality factor, which is 20, which equals 2000 REMs, which equals 20 sieverts. Now let's go to the third equation. This equation is somewhat analogous to the first one. This equation describes the exposure for gamma radiation from a source located at a short distance. Exposure dose decreases with the square of the distance from the source, like in the first equation, but it's influenced by the gamma ray constant and source activity. Gamma is the exposure rate constant, which is dependent on the particular radionuclide used as the gamma ray source. For example, what is the exposure rate 1 meter, which is 100 centimeters, or 39.37 inch, away from 100 millicurie technetium source, if the gamma value for metastable technetium 99 is 0.78 rankens per millicurie per hour at 1 centimeter distance. In this case, we simply have the exposure rate equals open parenthesis 0.78 times 100 close parenthesis divided by open parenthesis 100 at the power 2 close parenthesis which equals 0 0.0078. Note that the average annual dose from the natural background radiation is approximately 300 millirems or 0.3 rads. Now let's go to the fourth equation. This equation quantifies the radioactive decay remaining after a known time of a known radioactive source. As you can see in the animation and in the equation, we have the initial radioactivity, which is measured in millicurie, that decays half the initial value every half-life. The half-life for our animation is 30 seconds. For example, francium half-life is about 22 minutes, and bismuth half-life is 19 billion billion years. That's 1.9 times 10 to the power 19 years. Different isotopes of the same element can have very different half-lives. As you can see in the animation, our element after two half-life decays, was reduced to a quarter of the initial radioactivity. For example, if two millicuries of radioactive iodine was used to image thyroid cancer cells and its half-life is 13.2 hours, what is the radioactivity remaining after one day. The remaining radioactivity equals 2 times 0 0.5 at the power, open parenthesis, 24 divided by 13.2, close parenthesis, which equals approximately 0 0.567 Millicuries. 
Now let's go to the equation number 5. We can calculate the remaining activity of a radioactive element if we know the actual number of the radioactive atoms. We also need to know the decay constant, which is the half-life, and we should know the specific radioactive isotopes that we are dealing with. The number of atoms in a sample is calculated using the Avogadro's number and the mass of the sample. For example, what is the activity of 0.00001 or 10 to the power minus 6 moles of iodine with a half-life of 13.2 hours? First, we have to calculate how many atoms are in total. So we have 6.023 times 10 to the power 23, which is the Avogadro's number, times our quantity, which is 10 to the power minus 6. Then we multiply the result with parentheses 0 0.693 divided by 13.2 close parentheses, which equals approximately 3.16 times 10 to the power 16 disintegration per hour, which we divide by 3600 because there are 3600 seconds in an hour and equals approximately 8.78 times 10 to the power 12 disintegration per second, which is approximately 237 curies. Now let's do equation number 6. This, this equation is similar to equation number 4.